Welcome back to Berna's blog. The University of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and the Métis homeland, and respects the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. I'm very excited today to be in Dr. Amit Kumar's lab. And so this is a new, this is a new experience for us in Berna's blog. We're usually in the studio, but this time we're actually in a lab. At the University of Alberta, we want to be global leaders in addressing the most pressing issues uh, that the world is experiencing. And one of them is around climate change. And Dr. Kumar is in fact one of the most influential researchers when it comes to climate change as deemed by organizations like Reuters. So we are very, very pleased and very proud that Dr. Kumar is one of our faculty. And he's gonna to talk to us today about the work that he's doing on net zero energy solutions. Um, but I'm gonna ask him to explain, well, first of all, introduce himself, and then to explain to us what he does, but in language that I can understand. So Amit, tell us a bit about yourself first. Thank you, Verna, for the kind introduction. It's a privilege to be here. Um, I am a professor in mechanical engineering and, and I hold a Canada's a chair uh, in assessment of energy system. A lot of work that we do is focused on developing solutions for mitigation of greenhouse gases. Climate change, as you said, is a critical challenge for us. So we develop technologies as well as information for making investment decisions and policy formulation in the options, uh, related to the options for uh, uh, mitigation of greenhouse gases. So a lot of focus on what technology to invest in, what policy should we form so that we can have these technologies come at a scale in helping us mitigate climate change. Uh, one of the examples I could give is, uh, you know, recently we contributed to the development of Alberta's hydrogen roadmap. Hydrogen is, is a clean fuel. Um, if you look at in Alberta, we are the largest producer of hydrogen. In fact, with carbon capture and storage, we can produce low intensity, low cost hydrogen. And this is a big opportunity for Alberta to export globally. And so in summary, like, you know, we work a lot on developing solutions for climate change based on fundamental science. I was going to ask you about hydrogen. Um, can you maybe explain to us what do you foresee in the future that hydrogen can be used for? So you're, you're saying that we can use that to replace other forms of energies that we're using now. Yeah, so if you look at hydrogen, hydrogen is not new. We have been using hydrogen for decades. Here uh, in Alberta, for the oil sands upgrading and for producing fertilizers globally in the refineries. So we use a lot of hydrogen. The focus is now in using hydrogen for heating applications. So wherever you use natural gas, we are looking at potential product use of hydrogen. Hydrogen could be used for producing electricity. Um, so different forms of energy. So we are transforming hydrogen into heat in, in form of electricity. So using hydrogen in different sectors. So if you think about industrial sector, lots of heat applications. We already use it, but more into the heating application. A lot of application of hydrogen is being explored for the residential sector, where we can heat our homes with that power sector for generating electricity. Transform, uh, transportation sector where we can use it in the trucks and cars. So a lot of these applications of hydrogen are being explored and that's where we can we use hydrogen. So there is a lot of demand and there is a lot of work going on where hydrogen is being considered as a solution which can help us in getting to net zero wow. emissions. And, and that's where like there is an unprecedented interest in hydrogen globally. So what kind of timeline are we looking at? Are we thinking that this would be a replacement for everything else in 50 years or like how, how many years from now? Uh, so it, it will be a transition. It will be a slow transition. There are challenges that needs to be addressed. So we know how to produce hydrogen on large scale from methane, from natural gas. Um, what we are trying to do is now already there is work and demonstration on commercial scale where we can add carbon capture and storage to natural gas-based production of hydrogen, which helps us in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions from the overall process. There has been already demonstration in using hydrogen in the trucks, heavy trucks, in the buses, in the cars. Now there is a lot of work going on in looking at how do we integrate hydrogen in the residential sector. 
Um, the other challenge is also in terms of transporting hydrogen on a large scale over long distances. And, and so there is a lot of work going on. Natural gas pipelines, you can do it up to 50, 20%, 15 to 20% by volume. But going beyond that, you need a different infrastructure. So there is a lot of challenges in terms of developing those. So we need to develop those infrastructure where we can transport large scale hydrogen. So there are different aspects of hydrogen, but the key is to focus it on using it in different sectors at larger scale. Right. And do you think there's an Alberta advantage when it comes to hydrogen? You're saying that we are actually a large producer of, of hydrogen. Of course. Of course, Hi Alberta could be one of the global leaders in hydrogen. And, and it's, it's not only like saying that, because if you look at the components which ne is needed to make it a global leader, we have large resource of natural gas. We know how to do carbon capture and storage. In fact, Alberta has already invested in large infrastructure for transporting CO2, Alberta Carbon Trunk Line. So you can add carbon capture and storage to these SMR facilities so you can have low intensity hydrogen. So you can produce hydrogen on a large scale. And then it's also like, you know, where we are, we are blessed in terms of the geology to sequester CO2. And that we can do it in Alberta. If you take all of these into account, along with the workforce that we have, who is already trained in producing large scale hydrogen in this oil and gas industry, you find all these ingredients which are critical for becoming a leader and we can produce hydrogen at low cost compared to other jurisdictions. There are not many jurisdictions around the world who can vouch for these different ingredients which are critical to becoming a leader. And that's why the potential is there where we can become a leader in hydrogen export and utilization. Well, I, I'm pretty excited um, just by listening to you talk about this. What do you need from all of us to sort of support the type of work that you're doing? And so, uh, you know, if you, if you look at the type of work that we do, we develop solutions um, for greenhouse gas mitigation. Um, a lot of work that we do, uh, we train the HQPs for the future. Now, for us, we try to look at a range of these different solutions. There are several technologies being used, developed now, which are a different level of, uh, you know, I should say technology readiness level, different TRL. Uh, but the keys for us is in terms of identifying which has the potential, uh, which has the potential to make a larger impact, could be scaled up, are real and practical. And so from our perspective, more and more research at the university, and in fact, not only me, there is a group of researchers who are working on various aspects of hydrogen. If you look at hydrogen value chain, you have hydrogen production, you have hydrogen transportation, storage, and utilization. So as a team for this, what we need is in terms of supporting the infrastructure to basically test different technologies, look at the options, flush out the technology, develop the technologies which can go to a larger scale. So we need support in terms of developing new solutions for making hydrogen a, a much larger and practical solution. Right. So, I mean, you've got a big lab, obviously. You've got lots of students. Um, and we know, I've always described really the students, especially the graduate students, as the backbone of all that we do at a university. So maybe share with us a bit around your lab, the number of people in it, you know, your philosophy in working with students. Yeah, and, and, and you, you are right, you have hit the nail on the head. We, I consider students, they are the wheels of the car. They, in fact, Students are the people who basically move your research forward. They are the creators. See, we, we are in a situation where climate change has posed an unprecedented challenge to us. They are the people, they are the young scientists, the younger generation have to live with it and adapt it. They have to develop solutions uh, to tackle these challenges. What we do is we provide them the training, the tools and the skills to tackle these challenges. Over the years, we have trained more than 200 students, in, especially in the focused on energy systems research. See, when we started 20 years ago, there was hardly any discussion on energy systems research. But now you see everything they talk about is energy systems. Everything considers energy systems impact. Um, so, you know, we have come a long way. And uh, like the, this is the future, future for basically these students who will contribute to these creative solutions to address climate change. 
And, and so, you know, we play a key role in training these scientists for next generation. Yeah, so, so wonderful and so grateful to you. I'm sure, I'm sure you've planted graduates all over the world, right? Um, yes, so, and, and, and it's like, you know, the, the, the skills like now, the, these skills are scarce. So there are only few programs around the world where people are trained in this area. Our students have gone not only here globally, and they are working for the government, they are working for large-scale industry, they are working for the consultancy, they are working in NGOs, you name it, and they are working in different places and contributing to developing solutions for climate change. Wonderful. So we're going to have a pleasure to actually speak with one of your students. Yes. And so we're going to introduce Neil and bring Neil and just want to chat with him briefly about how he's been experiencing the lab and, and the research with you. Yeah, great. So I'd like to welcome Neil, who's a postdoctoral fellow. And as we know, they're not graduate students. They're really, um, you know, sort of early academics in, in my definition. And sort of in the background, I don't know if people can see, but that's Enrique. Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce his last name. Campa Milones. Wow, I'm so impressed with myself. But Enrique is from Peru, and he's doing his master's degree in and meets Alam. But we're going to focus on Neil because Neil's been doing some work, obviously, and I just want him to describe, well, first of all, tell us about yourself, where you're from, and then tell us a bit about what you're doing. My name is Neil. Uh, my large name is Nilanjit Patacharya. I'm a PDF in Dr. Kumar's group, and I'm rightly going through the biomass conversion technologies for producing sustainable fuels to meet energy transitions. The current role is to investigate uh, and uh, to methodologies, how to produce sustainable fuels, and how to facilitate energy, trans uh, energy transition towards meeting the en environmental friendly goal. All right. So you've been in Dr. Kumar's lab for one year and six months, yep. correct? And um, how how has the experience been for you? I mean, obviously your boss is here. He's, <laughs> you can't say anything bad, but um, how has it been? It's wonderful. But previously, I was doing intermediate pyrolysis where my goal was to do to generate bio oil. But the world right now is tilting from bio oil upgradation to hydrogen production. And Dr. Kumar has given me a good platform to explore this research area. And with the current topic that I'm studying and getting help from my colleagues, this will do good to me in future also. Wonderful. And your, and your intention is to try to get a career in academics, I understand? Yes, yes. We wish you all the best, Neil. Thank you, um, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing uh, with us what you do. And all I can say, Amit, is that we are so proud that we have a world-leading researcher in the area of net zero energy solutions and grateful for you, grateful for teaching all your multitude of students from 30 plus countries. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for the interview today to all of you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Varna.